Welcome, buenas, bonjour. Explorers all around. It's time for our safari. Let's hear your jungle sound. Get out your favorite book. We'll take a closer look. Adventures on the way. It's time to read. Hooray! Hi, I'm Alina Celeste, and I'm here with the Reading Explorers Program from the Center for Children and Families at Florida International University. It's funded by the Children's Services Council of Broward County and in partnership with Nova Southeastern University. We're going to do some reading and singing today. Grown-ups, keep an eye out for points in the story where I use some of the techniques of dialogic reading. I'll talk more about those at the end of this video. But for now, let's grab our books and read. Our book today is called The Pout Pout Fish, and it's by Deborah Deason and Dan Hanna illustrated it. Now, before we start, this story has a song and I'm gonna teach it to you. It goes like this. I'm a pout pout fish with a pout pout face, so I spread my dreary wearies all over the place. Blub, blub, blub. And you want to put a really good pout in there. You know what? Let's all practice our pouts for a minute. It's like this. This is a pout. <laughs> Oh, I can tell you are really good at making a pouty face when you need to. So now that we have the song, we're going to sing it during the story. Okay, it's time. Deep in the water where the fish hang out lived a glum, gloomy swimmer with an ever-present pout. Can you make a pout with me? And now we're going to sing that song. I'm a pout pout fish with a pout pout face, so I spread my dreary wearies all over the place. Blub, blub, blub. <laughs> oh, I wonder why the fish is so sad. Oh, and look what happens to the fish's body here. What's going on? Along comes a clam with a wide winning grin and a pearl of advice for her pal to take in. Hey, Mr. Fish, with your cross-town frown, don't you think it's time to turn it upside down? Says the fish to his friend. Nice thought, Miss Clam. I hear what you're saying, but it's just the way I am. I'm a pow pow fish with a pow pow face, so I spread my dreary wearies all over the place. Blub, blub, blub. I made that last sound because look what happens here. He falls into something. Can you tell what it is? Along comes a jellyfish, he floats through the ocean, his tentacles all trailing with a gentle locomotion. Hey, Mr. Fish, with your daily scaly scowl, I wish you wouldn't greet us with a grimace and a growl. Locomotion. I think that means moving a lot. Interesting. And scowl and grimace and growl. Those are all words for making faces like which is what the fish looks like. Says the fish to his friend, Mr. Jelly, I agree. I'd like to be more friendly, but it isn't up to me. Oh, look, what kind of jar has the pow pow fish fallen into? Can you read what it says? Oh, peanut butter, peanut butter. Why is there a peanut butter jar in the ocean? That's two kinds of bad. First, it's bad to fall into a peanut butter jar. That sounds very yucky. And second, there should not be peanut butter jars in the ocean. I think we should all sing the song this time. I'm a pow pow fish with a pow pow face. So I spread my dreary wearies all over the place. 
Blob, blob, blob. Oh, look, look. What animals are those? Oh, look where he, he lands. Oh my gosh. Along comes a squid, quite a slender squiggly sight. She is squirmy, she is squelchy, she is slightly impolite. Hi, hey, Mr. Fish. You collide a scope of mope? How about a smile? A little joy? A little hope? Kaleidoscope? Do you know what a kaleidoscope is? That would be a good word to look up too. It involves lots of colors and a tube. But anyway, says the fish to his friend, Mrs. Squid, I would try, but I haven't any choice. Take a look and you'll see why. <laughs> I'm a pow pow fish with a pow pow. So I spread my dreary wearies all over the place. Blub, blub, blub. Oh, this is just bad. Oh, whoa. Along comes an octopus with eight great arms covered on the underside with tiny sucker charms. Hey, Mr. Fish, let me tell it to you straight. Your hulky bulky sulking is an unattractive trait, says the fish to his friend. Mr. Ape, my chum, with a mouth like mine, I was destined to be glum. Let's sing it again, everyone. Um, pow, pow. With a pow pow, so I spread my dreary wearies all over the place. Blub, blub, blub. Look, he's upside down. Oh no! Wait a minute. Now along comes a fish in a silent silver shimmer the gang has never seen before this bright and brilliant swimmer. She approaches Mr. Fish, but instead of saying, hey, <gasps> she plants a kiss upon his pout and then she swims away. Whoa, look at that. How do the other creatures in this picture look? I think they look kind of <gasps> surprised. Mr. Fish is most astounded. Mr. Fish is just aghast. He is stone-faced like a statue. And then he blinks and speaks at last. You know, sometimes you can tell what a new word means. Just from the pictures, it says, Mr. Fish is just aghast. This is what aghast means. <gasps> Wait, Mr. Fish is going to say something. My friends, says Mr. Fish, I should have known it all along. I thought that I was pouty, but it turns out I was wrong. I'm a kiss, kiss fish with a kiss, kiss face for spreading cheery cheeries all over the place. A smooch, a smooch, 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 smooch. Kissing all his friends. Oh my goodness. And then there's a big kiss at the end. A smooch. The end. You know, friends, the pout pout fish cheered up when his friend, the silver fish, gave him a kiss, which is nice. But we should usually ask before we kiss somebody, right? Sometimes that's not the best way to cheer someone up. How do you like to be cheered up? You could wave and smile and high five. Pew! You could always ask them if they would like a kiss or a hug or a handshake. Or maybe you could just play a game or talk and listen for a while. You know one way that I cheer up? It's reading. I have so much fun exploring new stories and ideas and words. And I love when I learn a new word and then I get to use it. Like kaleidoscope of mope. Look at you, you kaleidoscope of mope. I guess that's not really a new word. That's a new phrase, but I love it. All right, it's time for our Reading Explorers Pledge. Everyone, raise your right hand and repeat after me. I am a Reading Explorer. I 
pledge to do my very best. In reading, math, and all the rest. I promise to obey all the rules in my group and in my school. Reading offers great adventures to me. Reading will help me be the best I can be. Great! I hope you enjoy reading this book together. Happy exploring! Completion prompts. Leave a blank at the end of a sentence and get the child to fill it in. Like, I'm a pow pow fish with a pow pow. So I spread my dreary weeries all over the... It's a great way to get them thinking about the story. Recall prompts. Basically, what happened? Or what was your favorite part? Ask about what happened at the beginning of the story at the end of the story, so your children can recall what happened. Open-ended prompts. Focus on the picture zone book and uh, ask what's happening, or say things like, tell me what's happening in this picture, or what do you see here? And allow the child to just discuss it with you. WH prompts. Basically, all the questions. Who, what, when, where, why, how. Say things like, what kind of an animal is this? Or, who's that? Or, why is he crying? Distancing prompts. Distancing prompts are how the story relates to the kid's own experience in their life. For example, what do you want someone to do when you feel sad? Or, what did you do the last time a friend of yours felt sad? How did you cheer them up? That way you're connecting some of the themes of the story to the child's own life. Thanks for watching with me today. And if you'd like more of my songs and stories, Alina Celeste, find me on YouTube. I'll see you next time.